to Jeff in a moment and we'll get started. We want to call the um we are live, right? We're streaming. Yeah, excellent. You want to just call the agenda? Yep. Put that share that as well. So we folks can follow along. I think if we start with that when we're screen share, people know they're lined up in the right place. Oh, Adriana stuff downstairs too. May have to close the guard. Oh, yeah, the red wrap out. When the water department was blocking the street, I got the direction. Didn't see Jeff from the chance. Did you? Who was it? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Great. Well, let's get started. And if um, Jeff gets here, we can have him attend since we do have a, we do have a quorum. We do have folks waiting to, to present on their cases. So I want to welcome everybody who's joining us virtually. Do we have anybody joining us virtually? <laughs> Before I welcome people, I don't believe so. Okay. Well, welcome to uh, people who may be joining us ethereally. No. Uh, and in the, the audience, thank you for joining us this evening. It is uh, Wednesday, December 14th. I'll open up. Uh, the official agenda for the Board of Zoning Appeals. We do have a quorum and we have a full slate of cases here as for public hearing agenda items. The first item we have before us is 943 Central Avenue. The applicant is AJ Signs, uh, applying on behalf of a, of a uh, car dealership, the Liga Hyundai. Um, they're requesting several variances in relation to sign height and um, uh, sign size and number of uh, signs. The last time we met, uh, this case was was tabled. While well, we sought some more information from the applicant, they were um, presenting some materials related to the height of a stand that was going to be in front of their sign, their main monument sign, making the case that it was potentially blocking uh, the sign from being viewable. I don't know if that was something you'd like to, to share with us, an update on that particular factor of the, of the application. Well, Tom Miller, the just sign company. Um, I got some uh, renderings put together for this. We have some pictures, and so you can see, uh, you can scroll through these um, from from either direction on Central Avenue: bushes, trees, uh, traffic, other signs. Um, if you see the lower left, for example, the the bushes block everything except for that. Uh, Hyundai symbol. So this is clearly the size the sign needs to be um, to be visible. Uh, when I took this picture, I was only uh, two doors up, so I wasn't even that far away on Central Ave. Um, the signs around it are absolutely enormous. The Home Depot, the Westgate Plaza, uh, even Mavis are all bigger than what um, we are proposing. Um, you know, here's a picture right in front of it, right from the middle of the road, so you can see. Um, it's actually in the wrong spots. It's going more where the uh, white car is, and then the, the pad will be more where the sign is. Um, again, I just got a bunch of different vantage points to try to show why we need this this size sign. Um, there's the existing size, the existing sign, same size. Um, we also have a letter from Hyundai Corporation uh, stating that they. But as part of their franchise agreement, they're required to have this sign. Um, that letter, hopefully, you guys got that. Yep. And so their, their guidance as well in regards to 
font style color that sort of palette items so they yeah. dictate everything they dictate the entire rebrand of the store itself and then again part of the store is the signage um so not only is it required by them but also if we did anything smaller you would find this dealership it would put them at an economic disadvantage first off um second off that road is so incredibly busy when I was out taking the pictures it was unbelievable um, you need all the help you can get to find that so you can feel uh, so it's it's a directional aid for sure. We want to make sure people looking for the Honda vehicle can see where to turn in. I know your GPS is going to get you close, but this will get you in the in the entrance. Can you talk a little bit about the? I know you're you're in large part replacing what's already existing um, in your application, and the board is is uh, is required to minimize the variance necessary. Could you talk a little bit about steps taken to minimize the variance request and the size and number of signs? Um, I guess uh, those pictures really, they speak volumes. If we, if we went any shorter at all, you wouldn't be able to see that sign. Mm -hmm. So um, we didn't go bigger than what's there. You know, yeah. You probably want something bigger if we could have it. I'm just looking at your logo. It, it appears in the application and, and what staff has put together. It's an estimated reduction in the, the actual size of the sign given the, the change in font. and. Uh, so is that right? I guess I'll look to staff. We calculated the original sign as uh, a square footage of 225 square feet. Correct. Yep. And that's a reduction to 193.75 square feet. Yep. Yes, that's um, looking at a 16% uh, reduction from the current sign. Correct. Okay. Um, can we talk a little bit about other signs of the dealership, why they may be necessary to guide people into areas of the dealership or kind of walk them through some of the other signs that are, that are necessary? Uh, we have a service sign. People know that, that there is service there, the Leah name. Um, we have that on the building that's required as well, so people know who whose dealership that is. And the Hyundai logo on the front of the building. Um, really simple, a lot less than most car dealerships have um, it's it's clean and, and simple and um just tells you again service leah and hyundai really the three things that we need people to know when they drive by or pull into this dealership i'm michael leah i just want to just say the beige down the building just recently was finished and it, and you could see it it just looks like a brown building when you look right across the street the jeep building is very very similar uh, appearance and they just did theirs over and it looks great and you can see the sign you know on that building does pop pretty good when you put it on there um any new sign these you see the jeep right yeah there. yeah uh, what what appears in the application is strict replacement of signs no net new signs as part of this application no actually service for service Hyundai for Hyundai Mines. Actually, Square. Leah's smaller. The smaller. Yeah, yeah no, but I mean, everything's actually smaller. Really smaller. We're not, we're, we're doing the same number of signs on the building as we were, we're there, different, slightly different size, but same information, same sign, basically. It's like for like. Assessing like, another placement. New, like for like, new branding and a little mm -hmm. smaller. Do we have any other questions from the board about this application? Do we have anybody signed up to speak? There's uh, no one signed up to speak. No one signed up to speak. Do we have anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on the, app, the application against the application? Any wisdom from the public in the audience? No. All right. Uh, thanks for uh, providing some amendments to the application. Appreciate the, the new visuals on the application. Normally, we ask the applicant if they would like to rebut anything that the public has said, um, but there's, there's nothing that's been submitted to record. Uh, and I checked the the site as well. We don't have any letters or communication from council members or um, uh, folks in the neighborhood. So, uh, do we have any other questions before the board or any wishes of the board members? Um, we didn't do the negative declaration at the last hearing. We would have to take a um, before we took an action in this case. We would have to make a declaration of the to see here. I just couldn't remember if we did it last time. No, we didn't. We didn't yeah, we didn't do anything. Yeah. Ask for more information. I'll make a motion that we um, um, 
make a negative declaration and the speaker of your five variances regarding project 00489. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Do you have any other witches to the board? Uh, I'll make a motion that we grant area variance 0116 um, to allow one concurrent main three instance by square feet freestanding sign where the maximum width is 64 square feet. It is a substantial variance, but um, it is in line with the character of the neighborhood. There's a small sign in that exists there, um, you know, self created obviously, but um, from the environment. Right. Yeah, and procedurally we have to do each of these individually. So yeah. Um do we have a second on uh the motion for air variance 116? I'll second. Page. Thank you. All in favor. Aye. Do we have any additional motions related to the additional variances? <laughs> uh I'll make a motion to grant area variance 117 to allow for a 25 foot tall freestanding sign where the maximum height is allowed. That is allowed as eight feet. Thank you. Do we have a second? Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, any wishes of the board in relation to area variance 118? I move that we grant area variance 118 to allow for two freestanding signs where the maximum number permitted is one per street frontage. Second. Do you have any seconds? I second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 119. I'll make a motion to grant area variance 119 to allow for a 93.59 square foot sign where the maximum permitted is 32 square feet. Second. Motion and second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, area variance 120 to allow three wall signs where the maximum permitted is one. Do we have a motion or a um, request for any board members? I move that we grant area variance 120 to allow for three wall signs where the maximum permitted is one. We have a second. second. Um, there, I have motion carries. Yeah, that completes the variance. Hold on one second. We have. Um, to make sure. Yep, yeah, we're good. Yeah. We need to cover them all. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay, our next application before us is 75 Park Avenue. This is the first time this case is at a public hearing. Um, we did workshop this previously. Uh, the request is for three area variances related to the installation of the sign on the building. Uh, the first is to allow a 10 foot tall freestanding sign for maximum allowed is eight. The second is to allow the assigned electronic change, electronically changeable copy and MUCI where such signs are not permitted. And the third variance would be to allow for a wall sign of electron, electronic, I can't speak today, <laughs> electronically changeable copy where the only freestanding signs are permitted to have electronically or manually changeable copy. Uh, with the applicant and their representation for us. So I will turn over to you guys to walk us through the application. All right, again, everybody. Um, Darren Casper at Saxton Signs. Um, basically, we are here before you for two area variances. One is um, the request uh, height of the sign being eight foot. We are requesting to leave the existing sign, which is a 10 foot maximum height at that height, because we just plan on changing out the existing letters on the sign. Looking at costs um safety being the entrance of a high school and things of that nature vandalism and stuff like that especially costs it was the easiest alternative to just change the existing letters out to match the new school um i have with me on that matter um from the chase contracting bill burry and he can speak on the, the alternatives looked at as far as structurally or answer anybody's questions as far as options of structurally altering the height of that sign. Thanks. Well, yeah. there, um, just to add, we went out with several different bidders to 
to get pricing on this and then looked at with the architect and with uh, Ms. Karina Cook, who's a director of all the leadership charter schools was with us here uh, as far as this, the intent to keep the structure, not to alter it and to fit in the same structure that we had originally this um, Albany Leadership Middle School, which we looked at several different alternatives, such as Albany um, Charter Leadership Charter School, and we just couldn't fit all the letters in, so we compressed it to where it matches the existing structure. We didn't want to take down the structure at all for additional cost reasons, and, and also to prevent any kind of vandalism or anything. So we want to keep it at the height that is currently at. Um, if I can ask that, do you measure when we're looking at the height of this? Are we looking from the pedestal? Where's where the where's height being measured measured from from this the, particular assignment? The high point of the arch, of the so arch. The HI, yep, down to down the, to the, the okay. top steps. All right, so I, that's what I thought. I figured I would ask to make sure that that's what we're considering for height. Um, does the height? Is the height driven from people climbing on the signs or trying to use like, 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 it's I, I one, one of the, 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 the considerations that was offering it was it is a high school, you are have a park right across the street. So one of the considerations on the positives and negatives of lowering the sign was you're making it more accessible to vandalism for safety hazards, people climbing on it and stuff. So yes. Is this sign lighted or is this one not to be lighted? It is, is not lighted. No, no change to the lighting structure. Okay. I'm sorry. Are we in a, we're not in a historic district in this particular this block now. Okay. All right, thanks. Any other questions as far as the gateway? I'll call it a gateway sign for lack of a better term. Really Let's talk about the the um the electronic sign if we could. So again, um, the second portion of the variance, which actually is kind of an odd glitch in the Albany codes, turns into two variances. This being a school technically in Albany, they are not allowed to have an electronic message center. As discussed in the last meeting pretty intensively, we know that this is kind of where all schools have gone and they definitely serve an extremely important functionality for schools, municipalities, and such. Um, if this wasn't an area where message centers were allowed, then they would be allowed to have it, but it would have to be freestanding. It's not allowed to be on the wall. One of the main things that the school considered in this option was trying to be uh, the least obtrusive to the surrounding neighborhoods. As I said, there's a park around, there is a neighborhood around that area. This being set back about 60 feet from the roadway accomplishes that. Um, there were several other issues of putting a freestanding sign of which we're lucky enough to have Ms. Cook here as a representative from the school. And I'm going to turn this over to her to speak of some of the options that they had and some of the alternative methods that they see. All you. Um. So as a uh, gentleman said, I'm Karina Cook. I'm the CEO for Albany Leadership. Um, and uh, just to correct you, Darren, the, this is our middle school. Oh, um, so, you even know, more, more, even more so, you know, to the safety in the area. Um, and I just wanted to just sort of add that um, this is a, a pre-existing uh, uh, rendering um, of the building, but we've done a lot of work on the building um, in terms of the, the exterior and the interior and preserving it as a school. Um, which I think is, you know, important to the neighborhood. Um, we just expanded down to middle school. We were uh, just at high school nine through 12 for about 11 years. And we started our first sixth grade class last year. And we are full six through eight middle school um, now. And it's a it's a, an all girls school. school. So it's all the leadership charter school for girls. Um, and so, you know, I just want to give you a little bit of background if you didn't know about us. Um, but, you know, we're very excited about that and we're excited to be able to continue the Bishop McGinn High School building as a school. Um, as far as the, the building itself, we um, have entered into a five-year lease with the uh, cathedral who owns the property. Um, we do have sort of 
uh, in our lease agreement um, sort of is plan to purchase the building uh, at the end of that um, that lease that there's a there's a purchase option. However, you know that being said, in terms of investment, we don't have a lot of funds to be able to um, sort of run an electrical line out to wherever it is that a freestanding sign would be. And there is power because there used to be a cross on that spot. So that also allows us to be able to, um, you know, easily sort of be able to put that sign up. Um, as far as, you know, just communication, as Darren has stated, you know, parents, they're, they're, that's where our car line was in the front of the school. There is no sort of uh, roundabout or um, a driveway entrance. So this is where our car line is and we use a, a system called curb smart. So the, the messaging is, is super important for us to be able to have them be able to see that right in that, that spot in terms of that kind of messaging. Um, and, you know, also we, not that we don't allow parents in, but for security reasons, you know, we have these days in schools is a pretty tight security. So, um, you know, we don't often, we have trans, any, any sort of transactions typically take place in the vestibule through the transaction window. Um, so, you know, sort of reminders and messages and events that we are wanting them to be aware of, um, this would be um, very helpful for them. Or, to answer any questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about alternatives considered um, in, in other situations where we've seen some of these signs or informational signs for schools, they're quite oftentimes placed on the sidewalk or you know where the steps might be or, or where the where the um the vegetation would be. Are there reasons why you decided to uh, put the messaging sign on the building as opposed to um, closer to the street or anywhere else on the campus? Um, so again, we don't own the building at this point, and so we'd have to, and I think I would defer to Bill and Darren in terms of the logistics of that, but there's no power out there. Um, so we would have to obviously run, you know, that power, which would, uh, all of that, that's all hardscape up there. So we would have to obviously, um, dig into the hardscape to make that happen. Also, you know, because there is a park there and, you know, the neighborhood, we did think because it would be easier for us to put it on the building where the power already is, um, it would also be a benefit to not have sort of this electric sign closer to the sidewalk in the park. And then on, on another note on that, being a little bit more urban of a, of a property location, there really is not that lawn front area like most schools have. Like you had mentioned the roundabout where parents are coming in. So the front front of that school where you would feasibly see another school have it as sidewalk and it's not even their property. It's true. And the main thing is electric, the cost to trench out that hardscape and run three different lines of electric out to that sign could have run up to eight to ten thousand dollars. And having done a lot of uh, <clears throat> signs such as like even if for different airports as part of mission centers, I'm sure you're all aware the closer proximity that you have it towards the street is more of a, of a traffic issue for people trying to read it while they're driving, which they should not be doing. So now that it's placed on the school, it's it's per, you have to be on premises and and within that range to look at it. Otherwise, you know, so it's not something that could be a liability for accidents. You that. also believe that if it was in another location, it would have to be higher than on a pedestal in order to be visible. Absolutely. And double sided, which is another cost. Uh, I tend to steal all the oxygen in the room, so I'll be quiet for a little bit. <laughs> if uh, any of my other board members have questions about the about the sign, I guess um, in regards to messaging, could you kind of characterize what the sign is being used for in, in messaging? It's important to have electronics through for any other type of sign. Um, sure, because it sort of can um, scroll information, uh, information regarding any events, parent teacher conferences, um, extracurricular events, important information regarding, um, you know, school breaks and holidays, um, just sort of any of the information that, you know, um, we would want to make sure that parents are aware of uh, in terms of the happenings at the school. Um, so, you know, testing windows, um, uh, forms that need to be, you know, reminders about forms, um, you know, any, again, any sort of 
um, we offer transportation now, so maybe some transportation, nothing like, like it's a flashy, but it's sort of like a scrolling um, sort of priorities information so that parents can have those reminders as they're in the car line. Um, and, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to picture this, but um, the car line is right on Park Avenue. And so we, the way we have the, the pickup line, you know, it's, it's very organized. Um, I do feel like it's difficult to see how much greenery is from the back of the fence, very, very little greenery. Mm -hmm. um, so again, going back to the double-sided sign and the pedestal, I think it would be more of an obtrusion, to be honest with you, um, for many reasons. Uh, it would be difficult for parents to see um, from that, that angle, um, the way that they're lined up. Um, and, you know, again, they're not coming in and seeing posters of reminders because they're just, they're not coming in to pick up their children. Um, we're not having them walk to the, the cafeteria or the, the gym to pick them up, you know, for safety and security reasons, it's, it's difficult to manage. So, um, you know, a lot of important information can be sort of scrolled through on the sign. Did you also mention that it works in coordination with the parking app to pick up that? Oh yeah, um, I did to you. I don't know if I did to uh, the committee, but we use a system called Curb Smart, where the parents all have a number, um, and so we have our staff outside, and um, we it's a it's an app, and so when the parents come up, they have their number, and then somebody from outside signals to folks on the inside that that parent is here to pick their child, and then we release the child based on um, that system. So that's what we're using, and it keeps it very organized and. And safe, and you know, we know exactly where the students are, when they're leaving, and who they're leaving with. Does the sign factor into that plan at all? Um, I don't know if I can answer that question okay. because my middle school principal would be able to answer that it's question. Um, you know, same thing like now serving number thirty-two. <laughs> um, you know, maybe I don't. I don't know that. Um, certainly, um, with the technology, I could. it could. Yeah. 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 Do you know how many hours the fine would run? Um, well, I think that that would depend on, I mean, in, I guess, in my mind, it would always be, but I think that we can agree to have it only certain, you know, during the day um, hours. Um, I think that's, that would be appropriate, you know, to have it be on a time where a timer, where it turns on in the morning at a certain time, it only goes, if that's a concern, you know, I think we could do it. Yeah, we would be on all night. Right. Um, there would be uh, technically options of either what a lot of, especially in an area like this, maybe say during school hours, which is variables during functions and things like that. So they usually say like an eight or a nine o'clock. It goes into either just a single screen, you know, time, temp, weather kind of thing, or it could be a black screen. As far as the lighting on it, it has photo cells, so it will automatically dim through a storm, daylight, nighttime, and everything like that. Do you have in your, I'm just curious about the structure of the lease agreement and you're making improvements to the building. Um, what does that structure look like in your ability to install signage, make electrical upgrades? Like you're, the, you're leasing the building for a period of uh, five years from the diocese, correct, or the church? Um, it's the, actually the cathedral. Cathedral, okay. So um, what happens if you uh, find, let's, let's put it in good terms, what happens if you find a bigger school and say, this is not going to fit for us, we, need, we grew. Um, mm -hmm. We no longer need this facility. What happens to the, the improvements that you've made or the, the, the sign <laughs> in particular? Yeah, well, we um, we have a, sort of an agreement with them. Any anything that um, is a is a repair, you know, over a certain amount of money is mm -hmm. their responsibility. Any improvements are that we choose to make that aren't necessary. That's on us. Um, so there are certain safety and security improvements that we're making. Um, and as far as the sign goes, if this sign goes on the wall, then it's really just going in the spot where this elect electronic, you know, electric electronically lit cross used to be. And so it really is the least um, sort of disruptive in terms of um, improvements because it could easily be taken off. And, and, and again, 
Yeah, yeah sorry about that. It's if you have a ground mounted sign and you're dealing with a uh, foundation, footing, concrete, steel, here you basically have fasteners onto a wall so that sign can be removed and reused at any location they go to. But Martin, the variances would be still focused to land, right? Right. I just want to make sure that um, we should probably get a copy of, of the lease agreement so we're not granting a variance where it can't happen if that's the case we're doing, you know, to supplement the record. I'm, I'm just thinking, like, we should have a copy of the lease agreement on record stating the roles and responsibilities of making improvements to the building. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm thinking of documenting this is a like a, this is a request for improvement to a building that the applicant doesn't own but is leasing. And we can easily supply that and mm -hmm. probably even, you know, a letter from the cathedral saying that they're okay with it. Yeah. They're, very, they're aware of what we're trying I'm to just, do. I'm, I'm just going down the road of legal intangible, unanticipated sure. legal consequences come if if we should grant the variance and one party doesn't agree and all of a sudden we're 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 in the middle of that. I do have a letter from the cathedral. Okay. okay. <laughs> do, we, do we have that on record here? Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to bottle there. I think it's, there. it's, it's, it's part, part of the application. Okay, we do have okay, good. I missed that then. He's in the better than me. Awesome. Okay. That's his fancy. Thank you. I missed that. Castle, do you have any concerns about? I I do have I do have one question. Um, but it, it does go back uh to the lease because you are fixing it to the building. Uh, should you happen to move um uh, after your lease is up, um it should be stated within the lease who's going to hold on to that sign. So if you're going to, as an institution, um, if you want the sign with you, that needs to be worked out in the lease prior to the affixing of the building. Otherwise, they have the right to keep it. I, I, I would feel more comfortable with that specified with how we understand the permanence of the sign. Yeah, I'm curious about your, your timeline. So what is what when did you want this done? Well, as soon as possible. Um yeah, well, I was just going to say, you know, um, the uh, SUNY Charter School Institute is our authorizer and our physical plant checklist requires that we have clear signage um, on the exterior of the building. Um, we right now are not really in compliance with that because we've been there since the beginning of the school year and we're still waiting to sort of get the signage up. I mean, it's not, you know, they're not going to shut us down for it, but it is something that, you know, we have sort of been waiting a while for. And so we would like to... Um, you know, have it taken care of as soon as possible. But Darrell, go ahead. I was going to say on our, and I know they want it up as soon as possible. And we're really trying to hope while mm -hmm. the kids are away for a break, have a nice couple week window where we can be there and be uninstructed to any classrooms and any temptation of any of these wonderful middle schoolers to see what we have going on during the install. Um, it's something we've done with the BCA and um, planning board is if they want, if you wanted to make a motion and then condition it on supplying staff with, you know, specific documents stating something, um, you know, we, when we actually write up the decision letter and have you sign it, we can mm -hmm. just hold on that until all documentation is okay. confirmed. That's sufficient. I if we make a motion on it, <laughs> right, it's right. one thing at a time. But we're still in the we're still in the presentation. Um, I yeah, I, I can see that working as a as a solution. Um, and there are there are other there are a couple other conditions that um, if the if the um, the school should move or close down, I think we can. Those are also my considerations that we're not granting an electronic sign, carte blanche, 
um, that there are some conditions related to uh, to that aspect or not being on at night. There are some things that I'm, I'm thinking of. But do we have any other questions, comments by board members? Do we have anybody on the uh, no. Do we have anybody online that wishes to speak? No, nope, there's uh, no one registered. No one registered. Okay. How do folks feel? Are there any, anything that promotes as part of the application process or talk through it? There questions, concerns, comments? No, I think it sounds reasonable and that they considered you know alternatives. The electricity makes it you know, narrows down the alternatives in a way that makes sense, I think. Um, you know, it's not exactly in character with the neighborhood, but um, I guess the purpose of the school, it's not in there minimizing, I guess, that effect by having it actually on the wall instead of the pedestal. I actually um, think that's very true. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, I don't think it's that substantial, I guess, personally, uh, impact on the environment as well, self-created. But I guess that those are my thoughts on the overall design going through the criteria, I guess. Um, I don't think, I think it needs to negative declaration on your seeker. Um, I, I like the idea of limiting at night as a condition. Mm -hmm. um, you're suggesting. Um, I'm not sure if we can limit the variance to the school. I, I don't know that, I, like the way I understand variances, I think really like, it just runs with the land. So I don't know how that would work, I guess. I mean, I think we can take the signs with them. But well, someone would be applicant is applicant at, at the, at the, I would say the applicant before us is the the charter school. Yeah. The applicant isn't the yeah. guy, it's the cathedral. But it's tied to the land, right? Yeah. The variance, like not to who owns it, right? Like, so it goes, if. It would carry to the next, if there was another entity that were to use the property, it would technically carry over to them. Yeah. Even if the, church sold the land it would just go to the next home right it runs with the land yeah mm -hmm. but i don't know i i guess i don't see a huge concern with that i mean it's been a school for how long it's built as a school yeah, it's built as a school structure so. itself i mean would the variance be a concern if the lease stipulates that like who the sign belongs to like if the sign belongs to the organization the organization leaves they take their property with them like you can't issue a variance for a thing that doesn't exist that's true and that's what we asked for in the as a document i mean yeah then that would that might satisfy that concern um i guess i'll ask before we talk any further are there times where this sign might be on it uh that are not needed i'm thinking like from 11 at night until four in the morning is there any reason why if the sign needs to be on at those times? I don't know. I think the condition could give some flexibility, like in that it could just be a condition that um, the variance granted was condition that um, you know there be limitations on the signage uh, as much as possible for it during the night, without necessarily saying it can't be on at night, right? It could just be like that um yeah yeah that there be as much time to limit at night usage yeah but we we um, want to be I think we want clarity in the yeah in our so conditions that are enforceable yeah yes, that's true it's easier to just say I, yeah I know use best judgment though that doesn't work <laughs> we've got to be we've got to be clear if we're making conditions um can I say something? yeah absolutely um I think just I like looking at this um, rendering, you know, with the black background and this like sort of garish red, like lettering is that's not what it's going to look like. Just so everyone knows, it has the graphics are, you know, the color is not going to be this like just bright red, like LED, you know, scrolling. Um, it it actually looks more like a TV, not, not a TV, but you know, in terms of 
the lettering, you know, our colors are gold and, and purple and, you know, it's not going to look like that. <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful or not. And um, just to be a little bit more clear, I don't know. If we don't, there's, we traditionally have never gotten into that level of specificity. Well, you know, it does. Please don't use sharpies to your side. Uh, it's, it's never been something we've, and I, I don't think the, the council ever anticipated we would, we would get to that level of oversight. Um, I think they're just defining electronic electronic movable copy as electronic movable copy. If I might suggest we maybe put in verbiage stating that after 10 a.m. barring any school function, yeah. and then I guess the decision would be do you guys want it to be black or are you satisfied with it maybe just being a, a static, static image? image? image of their logo or time temp or I mean, maybe they could be altering week to week. Yeah, just not movable copy over. My, my concern is the character in the neighborhood. You have a park across the street. People are used to it being dark. Um, and so I just don't want to set a standard where um, we're deviating uh, that significantly from, from the environment that currently exists. So my, my main concern is at night is limiting the light in that. Is there? And after hours where you you, know, you, you sorry to think of you, but I, I can imagine after school you have uh, students after school or a sports event or a club meeting. But beyond, I, I can't see a situation where you know you get into eleven o'clock at night and schools still open, and people are coming in and out, and that eliminates I would think would be the safety aspect of of having the sun. I was just going to ask: Is there uh, a significant amount of after school activity that takes place at the school beyond? hours okay yeah i mean we have after school programs we have sports we have clubs you know as you were saying um sometimes we have events that you know parents are there for like i said parent teacher conferences open houses um you know it depends on the time of year also but we do yes yeah, so i was gonna say you wouldn't want to put time on because like it's dark at 4 30. Right. yeah yeah so that's why i would say like the time would reflect that it would be 11 o'clock in the school summer off reading hours special event like whatever i yeah i, would, I just if you were a time time that you'd be covered in yeah. both summer and winter i mean 11 o'clock seems to be like well, nothing good happens after 11. <laughs> out of curiosity used to be one but now i'm old <laughs> what's the sort of electric demand on that like is I'm just curious, like utility wise, like it, like the longer you're running, are you like running up your bill substantially? Or they're LEDs, so it's not as bad as you think. Most of them pay two twenties or one twenty volt. They're running all day. I mean, it's not a significant impact, but it's not more. Than, counts, yeah. Right, yeah. Is there a cost to turning it off? To having it set up so it would turn off completely. Well, it, it never can shut off completely. Oh, but, oh, well, because these are all hooked up into so. the, their controllers that are in the clouds and everything like that. They're programmable and things like that. But like I said, it could go to a stack next screen, it could go to black, um, like kind of like a sleep mode. We're kind of putting you on the spot, I guess. What what are you your thoughts on the needs of the school for and of like um how you would handle that, like what time, I guess you think would be reasonable and are you, would you prefer black or static signs out of curiosity? Um, it is difficult to put a time on it, but if it's, that's, if that's the sticking point, you know, I can certainly, we can agree to that. Um, I think, you know, if we had sort of, a, and I don't know if this is an option, but sort of like a dimmer, a dimmer sort of stagnant, you know, logo or, you know something that like Darren mentioned um yeah that would be my preference over black when there's a black screen is that uh gateway sign I'll call it the gateway sign currently says vision again I'll say your your name at some point in time perhaps um is that lit no okay so we're talking the only lighted sign that we're under consideration the LED signs are are black by nature. They're made up of individual panels, black base that, <laughs> that go <clears throat> whether they're when they're off, they're still gonna look like that. But mm -hmm. um, you know, I I think Karina, you mentioned too, it's it seems the safety concerns for being for parents, for students, for any emergency messages is important too, which is why you would want to go with this type of sign versus a static sign. And then I think everybody's concern is, is valid in that these signs can all be controlled from a laptop that you, one of your operations, uh, 
people have that can adjust the signs for any kind of schedule that um, needs to meet the requirements of the of the city and the board. So they're fully programmable right there as far as on off and what's said and and emergency messages. It could be a clock, you know, there's so many different variations that you have with an LED mm -hmm. signage um, platform. Just going back to time saying, like what are the latest your events going to go ahead? Trying to figure out I mean and dance maybe 10. 11 certainly should cover it. 11 to 4 seems to cover the yes. gamut of people coming in and out of the building. What's the like sort of like footage? Like, I'm sort of like trying to think like just light solution generally. Like, I, I don't imagine it's like, you know, it's not like a spotlight. Mm -hmm. So there's sort of a maximum, like, on the, I mean, you can see a light, but it's not like. It's, it's hard to give you an answer to that because, like somebody mentioned, it is, it is like a television. So if you have a blue background with white lettering, the white lettering is going to pop out, but the blue is going to be not very bright, but think of like a police car light, like you'll be able to see it. If they had a bright white background with black lettering, it's going to light up right. that entire, you know, vegetable air. That's vegetable. <laughs> I can't speak either. <laughs> it's going to be great space, but it's limited for what's your... The way LED technology works is it, it's a sign is based upon the, the millimeters and the pixels. So the farther you are away from that, the, the pixel aspects that I, I can recognize are are finer. Like so, for like example, we can see that from here, and if we're another fifty feet back in the room, you can't legibly read what that says, right? So that's the other thing that defines what type of sign, what type of video display you're using, if it's a 20 millimeter pixel or a 10 millimeter pixel. And I don't know if you know what the pixels, I don't know off the top of my head, Darren, uh, but I do have the ratio is this. Kind of boy. <laughs> I do have the specs. Um, the other thing on that too is um, one of the things that helps, but you said the further away you go, the less, right? And it is, the other thing it does is there are actually ridges between the diodes not to get too technical and bore you guys, but they're about uh, like an eighth of an inch plastic. And what they do is they prevent those diodes colors from crossing. But what they also do is they prevent them going from side to side and out. So as you walk further to the side of a message center, you, it starts to go dark on you. Yeah, that's an important thing. Like straight on, you can see it clearly but from the side. The wings of the school somewhat longer. Oh, and that, yeah, that's when it faces the park, right? Like, and there's vegetation. Does, yeah. I, I try to remember it just there's and streetlights, too. Yeah. I mean, we're not yeah. in it completely. And there's the state plaza right behind, too. Right. That's why. Yeah. I was like, and that's a little bit of a state plaza. We're in Tapper. We're trying to take in the boat that we're going to see that one. It's okay. It's not like this is going to be the worst. Wait, yeah. Yeah. we're not in a dark sky area. No. Yeah. Well, I think there's lights on the, on the park. At night as well. There are definitely street lights. Right there was yeah. 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 So I guess I should yeah. know if that's the condition for I think it's so necessary. And I was I was just gonna say I don't know if this is what Martin was referring to, mm -hmm. but the like the wings of the, the building with the sign being set roughly over here does would block from some of the light, yeah. The adjacent neighborhoods, yeah. Um, yeah. And then, uh, one other item I forgot to note in here was just, and I think someone mentioned it. This is, I don't know, all of it, but at least the vast majority of the sidewalk is city right That's away. What I was thinking, so I can't put a freestanding yeah. sign there. And to be visible, it might need to be higher if it was. So, okay. Any other questions, comments, concerns, wishes of the board? So, just regarding the condition, if we were entertaining mm -hmm. that, so would we want to move forward with the condition regarding the 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. time, or do we no longer think that's necessary based on what Ali said? 
I think it's reasonable for minimizing the variance mm -hmm. considering we're um, approving something that's, that's otherwise not permitted. I think it minimizes the variance and balances the detriment to the neighborhood versus the benefit to the applicant. Um, and then regarding the condition that council mentioned about an addendum being submitted that speaks to um, who would own the sign mm -hmm. in the event that Kip no longer possesses the property or ends its lease. Mm -hmm. we, what are our thoughts about a condition that says that? That, that was raised. I think that's um, maybe a, a form that um, the city would find acceptable in documenting the ownership of the sign and responsibility for its removal. And I, I don't know if we need to get into defining that one because we can we can say that it's uh, per the planning department's discretion on what they would find to be an approvable instrument. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Does that... you just keep it in general. So yeah, depending because we're not if we're, if we're going to make a, a <laughs> condition for review, we're not going to visit it. Make sure that that document's approval or leaving it to staff. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to put that flexibility in there. Well, so just want to make sure that if you're saying we should include include that condition, right? That's yeah. Right. So in yeah. terms of the language, that's what we want to use more general language, is what you're saying. Yeah, a, a document that's sufficient okay. to staff's needs um, to be able to convey that information. Yeah, we would we typically re like refer to something that has supplemental documentation that you know. Right. Okay. So, when making a motion for brick variance, because this is two that's technically three. It's correct? three, and then there's a there would be a declaration in regards to seeker that would be needed. This is an unlisted action. So I move that uh, application one two six be issued a negative declaration under seeker. Second that. Okay. Uh, all in favor? All right. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, one second. Um, yeah. Was yeah. they was the seeker just on the, the area variance? Because you could just say it on the project number. Now we mm -hmm. just cover the oh, you don't okay. have to do on the individual ones. Yeah, seeker can cover the whole. So we can we can change it to the project number four nine five. Four nine four. Four nine four. Yeah. Four nine four. Yeah. Four nine four. Okay. Four nine four. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any wishes of the board members in regards to area variance 123? I'll make a motion to grant area variance 123 to allow for a 10-foot tall freestanding sign where the maximum height allowed is eight feet. Oh, second. Jump in the fry. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> any wishes in regards to variance 124? I move that area variance 124 be granted with the condition that the sign be off between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. and that supplemental documentation for sure. Later. Could we say instead of off, uh, not just like Google or um, considering it's not off electronic <laughs> yeah. change changeable copy? Yeah, is, is that displaying electronic electronically changeable copy? Okay. <laughs> okay. Do we have a second? I think we can second characterize the yeah. Uh all in favor. Aye. Aye. Any wishes in relation to air variance 125? The third part of the application. I'll move that the board grant area variance. 125 to allow for a wall sign to have an electronically changeable copy where only freestanding signs are permit, permitted to have electronically or manually changeable copy. Great. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Second position. What's that? Second position. We did. Um, 
about the supplemental documentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is we can just do a motion. Your motion to amend the to include that second motion. The hunger you rules. Making a motion that we amended the variance or area variance zero one twenty four to add a second condition. Um, requesting that the applicant submit to any staff uh, supplemental information regarding ownership of the sign um, as it regards to its lease of the property. Second. I agree as well. I'll agree. Okay. okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Um, our final application before us this evening is Area Variance 126. That is uh, 1006 Central Avenue, applicant the Saxon Sign Corporation. If you guys need a couple of moments, I understand. Um, or we can recall that application. Do you have anybody online yet? Anybody joining us? Um, yeah. so, no. We're doing a good job of making signs attractive. Yeah. So, that sounds like we need a sign for that. <laughs> I like what you did there. We have thousands of people. Wall sign and electronics. I'm changing the sign. Oh, siren on top. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Say, don't look at this sign and flash. <laughs> Uh, so, um, with that uh, the application before us is Area Events 126 for 1600 Avenue. This is an application for five new wall signs uh, as part of uh, McDonald's building rebranding. We've had a public hearing about this. Some additional material was uh, requested for the application to define what, what signs were being modified on the property. Um, before us, we have a representative of Saxon Sign Corporation before us to walk us through the application. Hi, again, still there, let's ask them sign. Um, so uh, I, I know during our last hearing, during the workshop, there was a lot of questions. It was kind of like you were looking at things blindly. The way that the variances are written up, it's it's not what it really seems to be as far as an intrusive sign project. Um, Avi, on those windows slash directional hanging signs, did we come to any conclusion on that? So I guess we're referring to... <coughs> so these are two of, just so you guys know, these are what we're talking about. Two of the five signs that are in question are denied because uh, we were considering them directionals, but they were above six foot high. Um, in more details, these are actually hanging vertically from the canopies above the drive through windows. So as you're coming around the bend in the drive through, there are the signs that say pay here, pick up here. Okay. Um, they cannot be lowered because the canopy height is the canopy height they have to have clearance for vehicle safety and things like these are the signs in question um so these are only two and a half square feet these are directionals or window positioning directional signs whatever you want to put it these were considered part of the denial so when we're saying five signs these are two of the five signs okay. um if you have any questions on these specific, I can answer those now and or with me. Are there current signs that say pay here, pick up here, or order window, pay window? Unfortunately, because the construction and everything has already been done, there was no way for us to find out exactly what was to the drive through. The only thing I know from extensive searches on like Google and their time frames is the front of the building had one very large arch with the term mcdonald's and they had the one freestanding sign the new proposal is calling for one arch on the front which is a lot smaller than what the existing sign was another small arch of the same size yeah exactly same size on the other side and then 
The third sign um, that the variance is for is this does have a play place. And I don't know the last time you guys were in a McDonald's with a play place, but they <laughs> rock. And you know, when you see that sign that says play place, <laughs> whether your kids are not, you're still going to that McDonald's. So it is a. You know which side of, of the, the health fence you fall on where you let your kids in the McDonald's. We don't need that. We just got to play. <laughs> I did just have a question then. So mm -hmm. these signs, the pay here and pick up here, they were labeled as the window position signs. And then let me see if I can pull it up. And why they don't appear really on any elevation is because you can't see them from a straight on angle because they're they're hanging, the under the uh, they're hanging under those canopies. Right where the cursor is, is that correct? Oh, uh, above that, yes. So that's the kind, yes. So okay. they're connected right to that canopy. Okay. Yeah, so those, those would, I, it wasn't entirely clear at first, I just wanted to confirm. So those would still be considered wall signs as opposed to directional. And the reason for that is, although they meet the, um square footage for directional they're above six feet of, of grade which is one of the requirements for it to be um a directional sign gotcha okay so then those are still part of the variance um and i i, I believe we addressed there's no alternative as far as height um do you have those pictures and slides did i send you the pictures of how the drive through look when you're pulling around just to show the necessity of the signs not being able to be put on a wall or a different height yes uh let's see well you pulled that up i guess just um and my one of my last questions i guess um just for court in general is just i guess it's still the street frontage even though it's not like on the street, it kind of goes around the building. I'm sorry, say, say again? Right, like some of the signs are not like right on the street, on the sidewalk, right? Like on like Central Avenue. None like, of the signs like, were, that are in question. That's an existing yeah, sign like, that wasn't It's like kind of around the building, right? Exactly. So there would be. But so it still counts as uh, the street frontage sign. Yeah, so from, if I understand the question correctly, like the one, it's allowed one sign per street frontage. They only have one street frontage. If there was another street here and this, you know, this would then front a second street, they'd be allowed a second sign. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't, the code doesn't really specify where. So technically, if it's a second, I could put it anywhere and on the building. On this property, yeah. you're really only allowed the one sign because there's one sign. If, if it was a corner, they could have. To, right. So it doesn't account for the fact that like this is not like a you know connected building. It's not a raw road street. It's like you enter and it's a whole property that you circle around with your car, kind of. It's a freestanding building as opposed yeah. to that. So it like, is a yeah. multi-sided building as opposed to like a strip mall where you have yeah. one side, one sign necessity, correct? Does the McDonald's on Holland Avenue have the same signage that uh, you're requesting for this property. I am not familiar okay. with that. I, I mean, I know in working with McDonald's, and I know McDonald's did supply a letter. Their packages are very consistent, okay. as consistent as a municipality will allow them. Is the one on Holland Avenue not like a freestanding building? It's the it same. Thing. Yeah, it's the same. Oh, it's the same. And I know it's business the play okay. place as well. The one, the architecturally, the one that's probably the closest to this one is the McDonald's in Del Mar. It's like one of the newer models with the similar, like, screech on the right through. And, yeah. Okay. Uh, Darren, I didn't see the pictures. Was that something you sent um, today? I may not have. Um, okay. I mean, as you can see, I have bees and probably 12 other variances and other guys I've been dealing with. 
I, I we just have pictures of and you guys have all are obviously familiar with them. Just what it is like when you come around the building of a drive through you leave the menu boards after ordering, everything is blind and you come around, you cannot see that wall of the drive through <laughs> until you're next to the wall of the drive through So these being hung underneath <laughs> those awnings gives you that. I don't know if this helps or is needed, but. Yep. That was my understanding. Yeah. Yeah, I can't help. Exactly, see if it would be on the side. That's okay. Yeah. And um, can you make sure it's going to put to send that to Abby to stop the number? Um, those signs here it says clearance with nine feet. Is that generally, yep. is that what's required for uh, the vehicle safety? I guess we're not really discussing the terms with that some of the lines. Sure, if there's any requirement, I just, I might be able to answer that as far as, I mean, I'm sure to an extent there is, but I'm not sure that there's any technical requirements for what the clearance has to be. Yeah, not, not under the USDO for a sign like this specifically. I don't, I'm not sure if there's something separately for building, uh, building codes, but I mean, it's fairly typical um, sign that we do see a lot. And you said you are not able to um, provide information as to whether or not uh, any of the signs are replacements of existing signs. Well, I mean, one, yes, absolutely. Um, and as an assumption, and like I said, I can't say 100%, but I could not see that older drive through not having a pickup and a pay here sign somewhere located. I couldn't see the benefit of it being on the wall. So I would have to assume it was a pretty similar setup. If not, some of them do those it triangles. Was, uh, or it was McDonald's, but it's the major thing that we did always been in McDonald's. It's just modernized. Okay. Rebranded. Okay. The, could you talk about the play play sign? Is that a net new sign? Is that a smaller sign? Uh, just walk us through that particular sign. I, again, uh, unfortunately, I wish I was able to find more information on the other side. I, I don't know if they had anything in the window, but I know there was nothing on the exterior or um, roof line mm -hmm. as the, the other place. Um, and then, again, it's, it's, it's part of their branding. If they have a play place that is part of the branding, their other option would have been to offer the existing freestanding sign. And that's just what they've done. And like it's McDonald's, they do a ridiculous amount of marketing and research and studies. And it is one of, if not the most recognized logo there is in the world up there, at least with Coca Cola and Nike and all of them. So even then taking out the word McDonald's was a pretty big thing. And that wasn't something that they just said, hey, let's do that. That was a well thought out thing. They're trying to mimic that new style restaurant. I think Starbucks kind of initiated it where it's a little bit more modern, a little sleeker look, fit a little bit more into any kind of a neighborhood with some more natural woods and, and things like that as far as not looking like Ronald McDonald's house. <laughs> um, so they have made some pretty good attempts on. Uh, so can you uh, just walk us through the five signs, I guess? Okay, so the five signs that are being requested is what we have up there right now is the play place sign. We're requesting that to be on the side, the entrance side of the building on that same elevation. We're requesting a variance for the arches, a small set of arches. Which step would you comment that are smaller than the, the current set? Oh, yes. Um, and there's no lever, it's just the arches. Um, yeah, as you can see there. Yep. Um, then the, the arches or the M's? 
I am confused. The arches are the ends. They're just yeah. the, the golden arches, is what they're what they're called. Um, so two M sides. So there would be one on the front, one on the side, and then the two pay here and uh, pick up here. And that has two uh, variances for it, one due to the additional signage and one due to the height. Am I correct? <clears throat> because of the height, they're not considered directional. Because right. they're yes. above six feet in size, it, the code doesn't consider them to be directional. It's still, so it's still just the one variance being requested. I'm sorry? It's still just the one variance being requested. It's still the one. So yeah. Yes. So then where is the five? Well, it's Place it's and, one variance for the number of signs, mm -hmm. and the number of signs being put forward is five. I got you. So one of those five signs is allowed. Yeah. So I'm still confused about the two arch signs. I think or the two one right here, and I know these are a little out of order. Um, let me to see. <coughs> So this is not the drive-through side. Um, I believe that would be. That's, that's the be front the elevation. That's... What you had up there, Robbie, was the front. Yeah. Okay. You're talking about here, and then. So instead of Mike Donald's here, it would just be the end. Yes. Oh. And it would be off to the side, like. Of developing, yeah, right. And then, is there still that M uh, as the freestanding? Yes. Okay. And that's not no, part of this. That's variance. not part it's of this. It's just the wall size. Okay. <laughs> so there's one M at the front. The play plates to two non-directional signs to <laughs> indicate where you go to pay and to pick up your order. Correct. And then, then on the side in which you drive in from. I believe if you're heading, it's got to be uh, east. Yeah. So we have the western elevation. Yeah. We look back at the building, there's an amber side side. Side. It's yeah. arches. Yeah. So it would be a uh, blade placed a little bit more towards the corner, and the arches a little yeah. bit offset from that. So further in. Yes. Okay. And nothing on the back side as you're leaving. No. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. One, two, three, four. Can we go back to the street thing real quick? Yeah. Was <clears throat> that one? I'm the looking for the drive through right side. Now? No, the drive through side. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the trees mostly in the way, but. No, I think there. If you, yeah. I think there, there's two. Like you can scroll in the zoom. You have good eyes. If you can see them. Yeah, there's see, them. there's two. Is that like something? And, and I'm like, guessing like words. Three of us trying to find anything here. That's funny. <laughs> street view is the best. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love street. <laughs> yeah, because architecturally, this wouldn't be there otherwise if they weren't. Right. I guess for our information in the record, can you? What's the need for the second M? Yes, right. Like the front facing one is obvious, but like what about the other side? Why does it need also an M? Well, multiple. First off, it's the entrance from the parking lot. So it's marking the entrance from the parking lot and they does provide visibility for eastbound traffic. Um, if you are on Street View and you want to scroll a little further down, there's a Taco Bell that's also freestanding on the other side of that parking lot, and they have three. But wall signs. You have the monument, not the monument, you have the sign of the pole, and the sign that enters the parking lot. Yeah, we have the single pole sign. Yeah. Like, it seems like, low. do you think anybody's without that M on the building not going to know it's McDonald's? And so, is McDonald's required all five signs, or is the uh, person running this? Location wants these. Here is the letter from McDonald's Corporation. Yeah. 
letterhead or a signature or anything along that? Yeah, there's a letter. Okay, there we go. Okay. I can't write that well. <laughs> I have it here if you like that. So it, it's your opinion that, like, because this doesn't say like five, I guess, but like your understanding is that all five signs are required by the company. We get these in from all over. They come in a brand book. This will show, I mean, this is slimmed down, but it will show all the internal signs and everything like that. They do a code check to an area. They do market research to an area to see what similar properties have and what they're getting and what they're not getting and that's yeah pretty much their standard package that they want all of their mcdonald's to follow now see now are you pining for the traditional commercial architecture that clearly signifies that it's not <laughs> compared to this <laughs> like McDonald's, not a pizza. I, I know. I'm going. I'm just going to the test in my head, and I don't. I, 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 I see it as uh, even though it's a substantial deviation from from the number of signs, the community character, the impact on the environment, um, the, the detriment to the surrounding properties. I'm just not seeing yeah. those parts of the test. It's like right. um, I don't see it as a, even when you consider the fact that they're scaling back the front sign too. It seems to me like it's a, a and, and to be honest, like when I look at the pay here, pick up here, because that really is what is a sign, not a sign? You can't see the content from the sign anyway. You no, know, it, it's visible when you wonder. And mm -hmm. it just seems to me it's the, the more you try to, and, you know, we're, we're, we're in one instance, we're, we're prisoners of the code, um, but in the same respect, we, you know, we have to interpret it um, just yeah. under when these situations occur where we have to come up with. Um, reviews of applications like this yeah i mean it's not five signs on the front of a one-sided building <laughs> right and i mean it's definitely even the five signs is in line with the character of the name i would argue yeah. point Do we need any more information? Are we looking for any? Any wishes on the board? Would you like to make a motion? Yes, I move that we grant action. Okay, but you need to see Yeah. Okay. We'll so, <laughs> <laughs> redo that. <laughs> 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 I'll make the motion that we grant a negative or that we make a negative declaration for uh, project. Under speaker for project 0495. Second. All in favor of my. Aye. Aye. Any wishes the board in regards to the one area answer, please? I, I move that we approve area variance 126 to allow for five wall signs where the maximum permitted is one per street frontage. Second. On there. All right. All right. All right. Close abstentions. Don't take that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Oh, kind of out of here, no? <laughs> <laughs> we can the value of whatever dollars this You can take turn. Rotation. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Did we need to discuss the calendar for meetings? Yeah, oh, um, motion to adjourn. Yeah, it's out there. Yeah, it's out there. Um, <laughs> you're you're you don't set the calendar. The city sets the calendar, but we don't need to take any formal action in regards to the calendar. Just make a note that we're going to adjourn. We don't need to take any formal action in regards to the calendar. Just make a note. Jeff, are you coming to the meetings? You go to the meetings next year. I will not be coming to the meetings next year. It's my last meeting. Wait, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll be excited. I'm moving out of the area, so we're fine. You know, thank you all for the <laughs> 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 um, But no, thank you all. It's been an amazing opportunity. It's been great working with you all. Um, and you know, thank Martin and uh, Richard for their leadership during my time here, and um, of course, council and. 
Avi uh, and all the planning department staff, but thank you all. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. Where are you from? Buffalo. So, are you anyone finds himself going down the fan? Are you lucky? I'm a Bills fan. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then you're fine yeah. breaking tables. Exactly. Like on time. Yeah. yeah. So with that, with that, uh, what are they saying? Top Gear? Does anyone watch that show? No. Okay. No. Well, they say with that bombshell, uh, <laughs> signed in the program. <laughs> um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Okay. They've never adjourned. Can't design. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not like noticing. Still meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second.